welcome, welcome again into the television version of Strategies for Living. I'm marriage and family therapist David McMillan. I'm delighted that you've tuned in. Join with me today here on Strategies. Strategies for Living, well, we're all about helping us live healthier, happier, more peaceful lives in our bodies, in our minds, in our spirits, in our relationships here in the 21st century. Now, we do that by engaging in important conversations with Folks, we like to call them life strategists each and every time we do strategies for a living. I got to tell you, they got my attention today when they told me that my life strategist had some recipes. Let me, let me, let me do, ch check this out. Um, they told me that our life strategist was going to uh, bring me a rep recipe for uh, who do you want a voodoo dip? Uh, and Gree Gree Greens. Now, if you're from Louisiana, I've got your attention too, because uh, our life strategist today is the author of the Sumas Heritage Creole Cookbook. She is Pandarina Sumas. Yes. Ms. Sumas, thank you for coming. Welcome. Thank you for Welcome having me. Welcome into Strategies thank for you. Living, and thank you for being a, a life strategist today. So you brought all kinds of goodies. And that's, they told me you were going to do that. So I you know. said I would. So uh, <laughs> now uh, let, let's talk a little bit about, this is the uh, Sumas Heritage Creole Cookbook. Now, yes. up here in northern Louisiana, <laughs> you know, we're from, we, we, we like to consider ourselves Louisianians, right? But a lot of us don't don't really have the full flavor. I think we're doing a better job of it. I think so. You know, but still, we need some help. So thank you for coming and helping us. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you for having me. You're originally from the New Orleans area? Yes. Our Pantorina. family roots are out of, uh, <clears throat> really the family roots start around Baton Rouge, <clears throat> excuse me, around St. Francis, where my father was born and partially raised in Mandeville, Covington area, and then of course, which is right across the Pontchartrain train from New Orleans. Right. And after his mother passed, uh, he officially moved to New Orleans. And then, of course, he was met my mother. I think right. he met my mother when he was 14, 14 or 15, and, of course, went in the military in 51. Yeah. But all of our roots run out of that uh, South Louisiana, Homa. Uh, Homa, Orla Thibodeau, Thibodeau and all, all of that. those yeah. areas. Yeah. Yeah. Bayou Lafourche, yeah. Yeah. All that's all of our, our stomping grounds. Yeah. Well, you and I were talking as uh, before we went on the air yes. and comparing notes. And it turns out we were hanging around the same parts about the time both of us graduated high school. You, yes. you hung out because your father was in the military stationed here at Barksdale. Yes. Came here and, and you ended up graduating from Bossier High School in 1974, oh, yes. my stomping ground. Yes. Uh, I graduated from Jesuit, but I grew up right down, area, right yeah. down in the area. Uh, would go climb the fence and play football <laughs> in the in the uh, in the football field. Knew how to turn the lights on, you know. So all my friends, would, you know, late night football games, they they they'd huh? come on over because David knew how to how to turn the lights on of the practice field at Bozier. How about that? <laughs> Don't tell anybody. That. Don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. It's out now. No, but you know, the the back in those days, you know, it was it was a, maybe a different time. It yeah. was turbulent. Um, I, when I moved back here, I went back to New, I left for New Orleans back in 76. But as we talked before the show, um, father got stationed here, uh, 70 there. I was coming out of my junior year, and of course, being stationed at Barksdale, we, my brother and I were the two oldest children. So we attended um, Bossier High School, like a lot of military right. uh, families. Uh, Military kept us a little cushion, but you know we weren't ignorant to the fact of integration and segregation. Right. All of that was yeah, going that, on. It was going on, and a lot yeah. of the schools were just newly integrated. Yes. So it was turbulent. Yes. Um, I didn't attend Bossier High from you know childhood or the other schools, but right. um, it was a time. It's it's sometimes it's a little hard to talk about, you yeah. know, because I did not. Uh, that the few people that I keep in touch with that I do remember, I, I still befriend since I moved back here. And what brought you back? What brought you back? Because obviously you you didn't have a decision to come here. Your father and your family moved sure, here. They were in the sure. military. But you did make a decision to come back. Well, the first decision was uh, I worked for 
uh, an entity on Canal Street in New Orleans, and like a lot of stuff, progress malls were being mil built, sure. and uh, the company I worked for was bought out by Dillard. So, you know, I was in retail. Right. And, of course, I was a single parent, so, you know, it wasn't an easy job trying to balance several jobs. So I said, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back up to Bossier until I kind of get on my feet. Well, and I did. I was kind of back and forth. I'd put some stuff in storage. And, of course, uh, my son at the time was getting ready to come out of high school, so I couldn't do a little, whole lot of moving around with having me. And I got grown and went off to college, and I thought, well, you know, I'm getting ready home and I started taking some college courses here and when I kind of put on paper to, to decide to go back to New Orleans, Katrina. Ah, <laughs> so, yeah. That kind of was, yeah. was a major Even interfere. though I was already here, I still had stuff in storage. I was still kind of going back and forth taking care of that bill. And then after Katrina and uh, helping other family members that came up here to get them situated, um, my parents started aging and my father had some illnesses so I just thought it was a good idea to stay, and then I tapped into Sumas Heritage Creole Creations. So, and so what? What's uh, and and wow! I mean, <laughs> the, a, a beautiful, a beautiful cookbook with so many wonderful recipes. We'll talk about some of them today, okay? Uh, and some stories, but you've also on your website, and it, hopefully we've got the website I think up. You took it. Um, yeah. We we've, we've got people can can take advantage of some wonderful products. Creole Yaya Yam, Yam salad. Salsa. 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 Br bring, bring me a, bring, bring me a, uh, a spoon. <laughs> I'm going to get into this now. Uh, and what else have we got here? Uh, down on the bayou, dirty rice mix. That's oh, it. there you go. That's it. And you can, you can see the spices. Yes, you can see the spices mm -hmm. in here. And uh, uh, who do you want a voodoo dip? Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, I, uh, quite creative. Thank How'd you, you come up with all of it? So moving back here, um, really didn't do the business as much in New Orleans because, like I said, I was a single parent and working and had, had a small child. And I noticed, even though my father retired military and him and my mother decided to stay here, like most, you know, the base is right there. Right. I, I didn't have the concept, being a native of the culture in South Louisiana, that North Louisiana, or should I say Northwest, was not. Like on many people that come here, they just right. assume it's all, it's all part yeah. of New Orleans when, or... When I'm interviewing people on, mm -hmm. the, on the radio, uh, I'm talking to people from yeah. all, from uh, one coast to the other, mm -hmm. and I tell them I'm in Louisiana, oh, the bayous and the New Orleans, your New Orleans and well, 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 no, no, I say picture the boot of Louisiana, <laughs> and uh, we're really more Dallas flavor. Yes. Uh, I think Louisiana may give us away if they could, to <laughs> but we won't go into that. But we're, we're more of that flavor than we are of the, of the South Louisiana flavor, unfortunately. Yes. But again, like I said at the beginning of the show, I sense that changing. I think that that is to in North Louisiana, that heritage. I see the change. Um, this is just a personal opinion. I think it's great because it has to be incorporated because it is part of Louisiana. We're still in the state of Louisiana. Absolutely. Um, I think it's going to be hard to, maybe this is the wrong word, to cross over because the south, anything past south of Alexandria is so strong. Yes. I had a storefront. Uh, of course, I've, I've closed it since then. I had a storefront at the uh, Bellagio when it opened. Yes, yes. And even though I had a lot of young military that came in, and my, the name of the shop at the time was Sumas Heritage Creole Cottage. Well, the Creole caught their attention. Of course. And of course, my name is unusual. And the first thing they came in, of course, I sold my products and some Louisiana paraphernalia and right. products and right. items. And I kept it that flair. But the first thing that those that are non-Louisianians, well, where can we go Zydeco? Mm. Or because they went on the internet. Right. Or where do they do the second line up here? Right. Because they still got that, they, right. whatever they checked out was all right. pertaining to South Louisiana. Up here, if you want to do second line, you've got to go find Robert Trudeau and well, let him yeah, teach and you. Well, yeah, and I know right. Robert Trudeau very well. I know him and very he's well. The, and, and people mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. him. I mention mm -hmm. him yes. because people like him are so important. But my seventh grade history teacher, she's passed away now, mm -hmm. Georgina Scott, Louisiana mm -hmm. history teacher, wow. told wonderful Louisiana stories that 
lit me up uh, out at LSU Shreveport. Uh, I took Louisiana history. Again, the gentleman has passed away, uh, but he was a wonderful history professor, right. Jim Miller. I never, I never saw him consult a note. Walked into class. It could be an hour and a half class. Yeah. Uh, he told stories. When a lot of the, well, at the time, the, the shop that I had, they would say, well, where can we, and even if there was a restaurant, they still associated everything with South Louisiana. Yes. And even though I'd say, oh, this is a great place to eat, or try here, or go yeah. there. They said, well, do they serve gumbo? I said, right. well, I'm sure they do, you know, yeah. but they still had in their heads that, how come it's, because they think it's all alike. All South, alike, yeah. Like, and it's not. Panarina, how old were you when you cooked your first Ooh. meal? Uh, yeah. How how old were <laughs> you when you started meal? this? <clears throat> well, I was. Or your first recipe? Your first recipe that you were proud of? Probably. Ah. As far as the first, I've always been at the hand in the aprons of great grandmothers, yeah. and might have been a little earlier, but I'm thinking that I remember the. So first you apprenticed oh, until <laughs> your twenties, huh? Yeah. Yeah, well, I remember and didn't realize younger, in between traveling with my father. We stayed a lot, like I said, in New Orleans because he either had to go ahead of us or we couldn't go at all. Right. Uh, you know, for TDYs. And, right. But uh, my grandmothers and great aunts, they worked for some of the, the most famous hotels in New Orleans. They worked for some very prominent families. Hmm. It was nothing to go in the kitchen and seeing them make a roux or right. doing a crawfish bisque or the, the, the old fashioned steps of feeling the tails and cleaning out the shells and, yeah. or seeing fish from my grandfather going to the pond to get fish, you know, th those, that was normal for me to see. Why are we so scared of things like uh, you got to make a roux in order to make a, <laughs> I, 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 I'm proud of myself. My, gra my grandmother's a board lawn from oh, Marksville. Yeah. And so growing up, she would make a dish called chicken fricassee. I've heard of that. But there were no recipes for it. Right. And so Finally, with the internet, I found a recipe. I said, "This, this sounds, this sounds like it could be could it." Could be it, right? Uh, and so I, I, I attempted. The first one of the first things was, "Okay, you start with a roux." And I called my brother. I said, "What do I do?" <laughs> he said, "Well, make the roux." <laughs> Yeah. And I, he said, well, you could go to the store and buy it. I said, no, no, and see, and we're I not going to do that. I come from a generation where they didn't, at the time, you know, in the six, they didn't have all the instant roux. Right. My grandmother, now she would make enough to put it in the refrigerator right. to use right. it. But as far as to actually go to the store and buy an instant roux or an already prepared roux, that was unheard of. Yeah. You know. And I don't think you'd want to do that. And by the way, mm -hmm. that fricassee turned out great. Well, it, it was, did. It, it, mm -hmm. I let my brother taste. He said, this is, this is just like we call my grandmother forgive me you know you have names all grandmothers and oh. she was bum 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 okay yeah so and my grandkids called me mommy yeah. <clears throat> yeah which is tradition in my family being creole yeah, yeah. We, we are we're talking to pandarina sumas we're getting we're getting <laughs> some good creole culture today she is the author of you got to get this the sumas heritage creole cookbook uh, we'll come back and uh, we'll talk about some of her favorite recipes good, and maybe a good. story or two oh, when we come back here on Strategies. Stay with us. We have this crazy thing going on today. I was just walking by and all these DJs and producers are set up all around the city. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. People that claimed they had no musical talent and then sat down and kind of made some really nice sounds. I like this music. <laughs> feel amped about today, inspired musically about life. They said I could play, so any chance to play at all, you know, that's my life. I love music. I saw it do it. Most of my family, they never graduated high school or even let alone go to college, so I'm trying to break that barrier. My daughter, Brooklyn, was also a motivation for me to go back to school. 
It's been so amazing to be able to give our child the life that we kind of pictured us having, even though we didn't really have that. I've been in foster care my whole life. He's so strong to just be able to like leave that all behind and still be able to take care of his daughter and be a good husband. Every day after work, went straight to school, studied hard, and, and it paid off. I could not have done it alone. We've been through so much in our life, and he never used that as an excuse, but as motivation to do better. I see the future is really bright for me. The high school diploma is just added to the confidence, and now I feel unstoppable. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome back. Welcome back into the television version of Strategies for Living. Marriage and Family Therapist David McMillan. Of course, you're watching Strategies for Living. You can listen to Strategies for Living because we began, all of this started as a radio program over 25 years ago. And still, News Radio 710 Keel, 710 AM and 101.7 FM. You can listen to us every evening, Monday through Friday, 7.05 PM to 8. And on Sundays, 9.05 to 10 on 710 and 101.7 FM Keel. You can also find us at www.strategiesforliving.com, and I hope you will. Pandorina Sumas is with us today. She is the author of the Sumas Heritage Creole Cookbook, and uh, you can order this. Yes, uh, you can order it on lulu.com that okay. they print the book. But I try to keep a few in, in inventory if they want to order them. But most Can you are. order it on your, your website also? You can. Okay, now, you can. And, and your website is sumusheritagecreole.com. And we'll find all the goodies there. You bring me today. You have the audacity to bring me. Uh, and, and I'm addicted. I mean, I, I, I'm, I, am, I am addicted to pralines. Uh, have I'm been because you know I, I've already confessed that mm -hmm. I have a, 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 a grandmother that's a board law, board law. Mm -hmm. and so uh, I'm addicted to <laughs> real pralines. What does she do, folks? She brings me a picture <laughs> of pralines and she tells me, Ah, I had a big order over the weekend. They sold, David. I didn't bring you any. <laughs> well, they pre ordered them and I had yeah, to There you go. Them. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but I'm going to invite you to the radio show. So if you're watching this, follow the radio show because, you. you know, uh, and you'll hear me scream and yell when she brings <laughs> me and Carla some, uh, some, some Pralines. Pralines. <laughs> yeah. Now, this is another example. Um, you, you're quite famous here. I the, would the, look the, quite tourist, the Shreveport Bossier Tourist Bureau. <laughs> And here you are. You made the cover. I made the cover. That's I, pretty good. Uh, when they asked me, I was a little stunned because most of the people at the Tourist Bureau are wonderful people. They are good people. Most of them know that I don't like to take pictures. Yeah. I know it's part of business. I You're know you very know. photogenic. And when they yeah. asked me and I said, even though I mean, I've been here some years, and I mean, I still consider this home to a degree. Right. I said, well, I'm not originally from here. You know, I wasn't born here, and you know, they know about the military connection. There's that connect thing, though. Yeah. There's so many connections for you. And they said, well, you. you know, and then, of course, uh, respectively, they asked me, they said, well, you know where you, you tie your head? We, we just think, and I said, oh, God, I keep those in the car all the time, you know, <laughs> whether I've with my natural those. hair or whatever. I said, yeah, right. I keep several scarves in the car, but if the gray hasn't been hidden yet, or if I have to be somewhere, and I didn't bring the comb or brush, and... So this is a fantastic, how many recipes have we got in here? I think we have about 250, 275. We have wow. a lot of, and I didn't really set out when I did it. Um, Self-publishing was just kind of coming out late 90s, early right, 2000s. Right. So I was really just getting, when a lot of our family at the time was military, ex, you know, most of that other generation behind my parents. They started dying off because many of them right. were born in the early 1900s. Right. And I remembered recipes, remembered watching a lot of things, and I got the extra added when I moved back to New Orleans, uh, 76. And I thought, you know, some of this needs to be kept, you know. You know, it's funny. You mentioned Ka mm -hmm. Katrina a moment ago. I did an interview post-Katrina mm -hmm. with the uh, food writer of uh, editor at okay. the New Orleans Times Picayune. Okay. And so many of the recipes that they had gathered through the years were lost. Lost, yeah. They were lost, and they thought lost forever. Uh, they were able, however, to, through the generosity right. of people all over the country, 
these recipes were spread out all over the place, and, and through the internet, mm -hmm. they were able to pull back together. Well, even though and, some uh, of them are basic, you know, I call them basic Louisiana recipes, whether right. it's red beans and rice or jambalaya, I feel even though you still all, maybe most families have a basic, you know, the yeah. basic rice, chicken, sausage. Sure. That story, everybody has a different kitchen story. Everybody's got a story. So that and it's story, the story keeps it different. Yeah. You know, whether it was with your, what we call grandma or mama or mommy or my mare. And the stories make us rich, make don't the they? Rich, the yeah, stories. They make us um, rich. And I remember a lot of the stories. I remember, I just, I don't, and I don't know if, I just remember, and sometimes I surprise myself with what I remember. Yeah. I'm thinking, I remember her doing that. You I know, that it. unconscious mind yes, is, is the young yes. mind, and it's always, it's 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 there mm -hmm. if it's happened to us yes. it's there and recorded someplace and i even yeah. mentioned to my son um, that he was very and he mentioned it, he's very fortunate when i moved back to new orleans he had interaction as far as spending the night in the kitchens with his they were my great aunts so they were his great great aunts wow he was able to be with in their presence well, most of them started passing away mid late 80s we, we we've got to preserve that culture yes, don't we, we do. and that's why books like this recipes and books like this are so important mm -hmm. I, I you know I, I hate to ask you this question but I'm going to yeah, I'll I apologize to you ahead of time do you have a favorite recipe it's probably like oh, asking gosh. you what your favorite child is right I only have one so. Uh, so well that's not a hard one <laughs> no, for you but it may be for several people from uh, wow, big I Louisiana don't know if family I have a favorite um, or is there one that that you love to make, that you, you can't wait to get into the kitchen to make? I've, I've been told, and plus I like to make it for myself, uh, I do a really good jambalaya. Mm. I, a lot of times I've- And what's your jambalaya's name? It's, well, on the, well, I don't have one with me. Uh, my product jambalaya is Jump in the Broom jambalaya. Jump in the Broom, broom jambalaya. jambalaya, okay. I try to bring the, res the bittersweet respect to the era of slavery. Right. You know, a right. lot of times jambalaya was served you know, slaves were not allowed to be married. Right. This was a sanction that they had themselves from Africa right. of jumping over to the land of matrimony. Right, and that's what jumping, jumping, jumping the, the broom, broom jumping over was to getting another, married. Getting married. Yeah. And a lot of times the food for slaves was very rare, uh, very scarce. Right. And of course being in Louisiana and most of any southern states, Alabama, Georgia, rice was very available. Right. Because uh, rice plantation, rice planting came over with uh, slaves. Right. right. So you had rice, of course they Manded the plantation with the chickens. So rice was plentiful. Rice was plentiful. Chicken, chicken, was, chicken plentiful. was plentiful. And yeah. if you live close to the bayou or the Gulf, fish, 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 fish food. Yeah. was plentiful. So, and a lot of times, of course, over the years, of course, now I, um, I do a very good crawfish and andouille sausage jambalaya. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, just kind of switch it up a little bit with some yeah. creativity. But I try to keep the creativity with the culture. How long did it take you to uh, put gosh. together this book of wonderful uh, recipes and stories? Two, and that's, years. that's the that's the rich part. There's, yes. there's history in here. There, there are stories in here. Uh, and I have found some family members because of the book. Wow. And with that, along with yeah. Facebook, you know, found out someone got the book and said, I saw that picture of uh, your great great grandfather, your great grandmother's father in the back. Oh, well, my that goodness. was my father's uncle. I was like, what? Yeah. So, yeah. technology, you know, Google connections, connections has yeah. put us together. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, together. This, this has had to be, uh, and I know the book has been very successful for you. Your, your business is, is obviously successful. Thank you. But it's also got to be uh, a, a labor of love. It is. Uh, yeah. It is a labor of love. And I just, of course, you know, time moves on. We're all going to leave the earth. But I, I'm, I'm hoping the ancestors are pleased because if, mm -hmm. if it was, I'm, I am because of them. I, I think they're smiling <laughs> on you, Pandorina, because I think you've left the family memories. I think you've left the, uh, you've blended, uh, you've sauteed. There you go. And <laughs> you've, simmered it. You've sauteed <laughs> and, and simmered, simmered it the story and the recipe in a good roux. Yeah. Good yeah. If there is somebody watching us, <laughs> that is reluctant. Okay, I'm going to go get the cookbook, but I, man, I'm, I'm going to mess this up. I'm going to, I can't, I can't do this, or I can't possibly do these wonderful Louisiana recipes. 
the right way. What would you tell us? I tell many people when I used to do the farmer's market or certain vendorships when they pick up one of the products. Or right. they'll, they'll and that's it. one of the things with yes. the products, you really can't screw them up. I tell people, even with the directions on this or the gumbo mix, just say the following directions and you do mess it up. If in your mind you've messed right. it up, you can still eat it. It's still going to taste. It's still, it's gonna still going to taste, taste Louisiana Indiana. wonderful, isn't it? Yes. It's going to taste <laughs> Louisiana and Pandrina Sumas wonderful. <laughs> Where can you find her? Well, uh, her website is uh, again SumasHeritageCreole.com. Lots of recipes there, uh, or rather, you can order the cookbook there. Lots of products there, and Pandrina is there. So Thank I hope you, you will continue. Thank you. The conversation that we've started today with Pandrina Sumas so and uh, another great way to continue the conversation with her is to get a copy of this book. I know I'm going to get one, so I hope you will too. Folks, thank you for tuning in to Strategies for Living. Don't forget, uh, we're going to take a, a, a break for a few, uh, a few months here at uh, Bipsy and the television version. We'll be back in September. Uh, until then, where do you find us? We'll see you on the radio. Uh, News Radio 710 Kiel, 101.7 FM, uh, every weeknight, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. on, uh, on Kiel, and uh, Sunday mornings, 9.05 to 10. For Pandrina Sumas, I'm marriage and family therapist David McMillan. Thank See you. you next time on Strategies for Living. <laughs>